All right. No wonder they couldn't vote back then. <laughs> Hey, it's me. I'm doing another video. You like my videos? Doesn't seem like it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I've learned some tips and tricks from YouTube channels and uh, none of them work. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I do, trying to connect with you guys through my very funny stand-up comedy that you guys, a lot of you seem to like when you watch it. I don't know, whatever, who cares? Uh, here's some stuff from when I was in Columbus doing the Don't Tell shows. Uh, this video's long. Sometimes there's jokes twice, but the reaction in the crowd makes the interaction fun. So I, I say different things after the joke and enjoy this one and uh tell your friends and... All right. hey keep it going for samson and for jr jr i'm gonna be honest i i don't like the look of uh two black guys going up and then me coming up dressed like this uh, i look like i'm about to be like all right we'll start the bidding and <laughs> I didn't know if that was going to go over. I'm glad it did. Okay, we're going to be all right. Uh, when I make jokes about black people, people get weird. They're like, oh, you think you make jokes about black people? You think you do that because you got black friends? No. But I do have fat white daughters, so I spend a lot of time with black people. <laughs> They don't like that joke either. <laughs> Their boyfriends think it's hilarious. <laughs> At least I think they do. They said, that's lit fam, no cap. And I'm like, I think that's good. <laughs> the thing is, I actually really, really, like racism make a, made a weird comeback in America. And uh, actually, like not if you're black. If you're black, you're like, no, I was here the whole time. <laughs> But like it got real popular again, and like the thing is, I actually really like some racist people. If I don't like them, I love them. They're my parents, uh, <laughs> and they always say things like this: "How come black people can call us cracker, but we can't call them the n-word?" And I always tell them the same thing: "You can." <laughs> you just gotta deal with what happens next. <laughs> Now, if you want to use that word with immunity, that's a different situation, because words do eventually go out of style, like powerful words. Like, sir, if I call you slubber de gullion, does that mean anything to you? No, but if I called you slubber de gullion like 500 years ago in England, you'd lose your mind. you take off a white glove and slap me in the face and then challenge me to a duel, then we go out in the street and fight to the death over a word that no longer has meaning. Seems silly, right? So if you're a white person that wants to use the N-word, and let's be honest, we all do. <laughs> Not in a bad way. We want to sing the songs. <laughs> I always feel so dumb when I'm like, if you don't know, now you know, fella. <laughs> We can't say it. So we have to wait for it to go out of style. And it's not going out of style anytime soon. So if you want to be able to use it without getting in trouble, you're going to have to wait like 500 years or 600 years. And the only way you'll be able to do that is if you cryogenically freeze yourself for like 1,000 years, for 2,000 years. It's a big one. It's going to take a while. <laughs> and then you'll go out in the public in the future. You'll walk around, just kind of float it out there in a crowded space and see how people react. Go out in a pub and just be like, N word. N word. Getting a little louder each time. N word. Now you're getting confident. N word really hitting the R at the end. Now you're screaming, N word. N word. And finally, somebody's going to say something to you because you're a maniac screaming in public. And they're going to be like, hey, I don't even know what you're talking about. This is America. Speak Spanish. <laughs> it's weird being in a climbing gym when you're my size because it's just like being, I, this could be a library. I don't use those either. Like, <laughs> it just, yeah. Uh, when you wear, a fat guy and you wear a suit though, people are proud of you. They're like, hey. 
we know how much work that took. That's, and every fat guy suit is expensive. That's the thing too. It's like there's so much fabric. Like it took two Chinese children to put this together. Like maybe more. It's probably like remember in grade school when you did the parachute? That's probably what it looked like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got kids. Yeah, like I mentioned them earlier, they're uh, they're actually my stepkids, but I raise them like they're my own. Uh, they're my ex-wife's kids from her first marriage. I take care of them, provide for them. They don't see their biological father. I stepped into that role. Cool. Sometimes people clap, but you guys are like, hey, you don't have to do that. <laughs> and they're mean to me too. <laughs> They're growing up now, but when they were in, like teenagers, my oldest daughter was real mean to me. One day she said to me, I hate you, and I've always hated you. <laughs> now in her defense, I did ask her to refill the Brita pitcher, so I probably had it coming. <laughs> That's 17 seconds of her life she'll never get back. But when she said, I hate you, and I've always hated you, it didn't even hurt my feelings, because I'd already been around long enough that when she said that, what I heard was this. I'm 16 years old and I don't understand why my biological father isn't a part of my life. It makes me sad, it makes me angry, I get emotional and I lash out at people, but I don't mean it and I'm sorry. But I do appreciate that you've taken time out of your life to care for me, love me, provide for me, and be a role model for me. <laughs> and I fucking hate you. Which is good. You want your teenagers to hate you a little bit. You shouldn't, if you have teenagers and they don't hate you a little bit, you're fucking up as a parent. Like, that's not a good scene. Like, you ever meet that, like, mother-daughter, and they're like, we're best friends. Like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> like, one of them's a teenager, the other one had them when they were a teenager, and it's like, yeah, that's a, they're like a few years away from having a joint OnlyFans account. <laughs> Yeah. I agree. It is fucking funny. That's why I like saying stuff like that. Cause I like that you couldn't even just laugh. You're just like, I have to say this. I have to declare. And getting a white woman with glasses to laugh in America these days, top tier. That's what it felt like to get black people to laugh when I first started 20 years ago. When I got them to laugh, I was like, oh, I'm doing this. And now you got a white woman with glasses to laugh. You're like, all right. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> you guys are a bit touchy. <laughs> I also have a dog. Uh, I have a petite golden doodle. Yeah. My friends, when I got that dog, they're like, oh, why'd you get a gay dog? <laughs> And I was like, my dog's not gay. And they're like, oh, we mean you're gay for getting that dog. <laughs> People get mad at me because I bought my dog and uh, you're supposed to adopt. And, uh, but they don't, understand, they don't understand my situation. I, I live in a condo, so I need a small dog that's hypoallergenic, that's not going to shed, blah, blah, blah. Those are my excuses. But what it comes down to is I have rescue kids. I can buy a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm from Cleveland and it's nice to come down here to Columbus where uh, we have some sort of rivalry going on that you guys don't know about because <laughs> things are actually like going well here and up there we're like no we're better than Columbus we swear like it's <laughs> We do have more diversity, like we have white homeless people, like, <laughs> you guys need to diversify a little bit, like we got poor in every color. <laughs> now, I, uh, I work on the radio up in Cleveland and I work in uh, an office, like, but not in like the office, but I just learned about office culture. Anybody here working in an office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing in an office, sir? Program coordinator at Ohio State. Am I supposed to say that now? Do I have to say OH? <laughs> I like how like when you even say it without enthusiasm, you're like, we, we can't stop ourselves. <laughs> Program coordinator. So like in athletics or just uh, courses or something like that? Uh, leadership business. Le leadership business, yeah. <laughs> Standing on business. I don't know what that means. 
just keep saying it applies to women's basketball or something. <laughs> <laughs> they have the final four for women's basketball in Cleveland right now, and like there's a big billboard that says, we'll teach you how to stand on business. And I'm like, I, no. <laughs> I just I don't want somebody else to do the business. I like I like I don't even want to stand. <laughs> Who else works in an office? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What what do you do? I'm the portfolio sales specialist for a property management company. You're the portfolio <laughs> sales specialist <laughs> for a property manager. Just I remember when I was a kid, I was like, someday. <laughs> I dream of being the portfolio sales specialist for, I already forgot what the rest of it was. But here I am just fucking telling jokes. But I wanted what you got, so. Portfolio. Just portfolios? Let me tell you about my office experience. Uh, so I, like I said, I work at a radio station, and here's what I learned about office culture. The better the candy on someone's desk, the worse the conversation you're about to have. <laughs> it is a trap. <laughs> now it goes the other way too. Sometimes bad candy, good conversation. Like I w work with this one dude, Trent. Trent's a funny dude. We talk about movies, music, sports, but his candy is trash. It's not even candy. It's raisins, little dusty boxes of raisins. <laughs> you ever hear somebody call raisins nature's candy? Yeah, that's why we invented candy. Nature wasn't getting it done. Nobody wants to win a golden ticket to that factory. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> we're going to Dole. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin, I'll be your tour guide today here at Dole. And these are grapes. Now we wait. <laughs> in a few hours, I'll show you how they come out of the box in one big sticky clump. <laughs> no. But then other people, good candy, tough situations to talk about. Like, there's one lady, she's got Skittles in bags, and that's top tier. <laughs> the only problem is, she is an overshare. She tells you too much about her life way too quickly. <laughs> And I wasn't ready for that. Because I went over and I was like, what's up, Charlene? Mind if I have a bag of Skittles? And she's like, that's what they're there for, Bill. I'm like, thank you so much. I love Skittles. They're my favorite candy. And she's like, they're my favorite candy too, Bill. It used to be Starburst, but that's the favorite candy of my ex-husband that used to beat me. What? <laughs> no, come on. That's, that's not casual candy conversation. <laughs> Now I gotta stand there and empathize for 15 minutes because you can't just make a joke and be on your way. You can't be like, oh, does he work here too? I love Starburst. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's my nemesis. My nemesis is an older lady. Her name is Margaret. Margaret is, uh, got an office and she keeps not just candy in there, but food, like good food. Because she has kids that are all grown up and she still grocery shops at Costco like they live with her, but she doesn't know what to do with all the food, so she brings it to work and keeps it in her office that locks. And she's got everything in there. She's got those little orange crackers with the peanut butter. She's got granola bars, the soft kind, that don't turn to dust when you take a bite. Like, I don't know what's happening in the Nature Valley, but it needs to stop. <laughs> Eating one of those candy bars, like, it was designed by Thanos. It's just like... And then uh, she's got a little mini fridge with string cheese and yogurt in it. And then in that mini fridge, there's also a little freezer. And in the freezer, there's toaster strudels. Yeah, to yeah, the Pop-Tarts of a two-parent household. <laughs> the only thing is, if you take any of her food, she's got a little quid pro quo. You've got to go with her to church. And I didn't know that. <laughs> So one day I went in there, got some of those orange crackers with the peanut butter, and she's like, Bill, here's the deal. Take those. You gotta go with me to church on Sunday. I was like, I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> Sunday rolls around, I go to church. By the way, it's not like a fun church. It's like old white people. Like it was black church, sign me up. 
it's old white people church. Those are two very different churches. If there's a movie about black people church, they're the good guys in the movie. (laughs) Media is going to be there. It's going to be a little corny, but it's going to be silly and fun overall. Old white people church, they're the bad guys in the movie. They're like, you won't be dancing in this town, Kevin Bacon. (laughs) That's where she wanted to go. And uh, she's like... See you on Sunday. I'm like, I'll see you on Sunday. Then Monday rolls around, because I don't go to church on Sunday. And uh, Monday, I was hiding from her. She found me. Uh, <laughs> and she called me. She's like, hey, Bill, you said you were going to go to church, and you didn't go to church. Hoping you have a good excuse. And I was like, oh, yeah, I was on my way. But then Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> and he wanted to go to brunch. So uh, <laughs> you got to go to brunch with Jesus, because uh, you drink for free. Like... <laughs> And she goes, oh, Bill, you're so funny to some people. (laughs) Yeah, old white people church is good at passive aggressive. And she got me right in the heart with that one. (laughs) And she said, you're going to go to church and you didn't. That's a lie. And that's a sin. Sounds like you could actually use some church. I was like, you know what? You're right. I'll see you this Sunday. That Sunday rolls around. I didn't go to church again. (laughs) But what I did do is I became friends with the janitor that has a key to her office So I just go and take food when she's not there. (laughs) Because the Lord works in mysterious ways. (laughs) But I am a fat guy in a suit, and I know uh, people love telling me how good I look when I'm in a suit because they know how much work goes into being a fat guy in a suit. (laughs) Right? I know I do, and that's why people, because people are just like, oh, you did it. You put a suit on. You're trying again. And the thing is, like, a fat guy in a suit, like, every fat guy's suit is expensive because there's so much fabric. Like, it took, like, two kids from China to make this. Like, you can't... It's probably more than two. It's probably, like, you remember in, like, grade school when you play with the parachute? That's what it looked like when they were making my suit. <laughs> what? Well, it used to be fancy in this country. This used to be how people dressed all the time. When people went in public, they like men, they wear a suit and a hat, and they have like a monocle, and if there's a puddle, they put their coat over it, so a lady want to get her shoes wet. I don't know what coats used to be made of. <laughs> but apparently they're puddle proof, and women didn't know how to go around things. <laughs> I know, right? No wonder they couldn't vote back then. <laughs> You can vote now. You know who voted on that? Men. How about a thank you every once in a while? (laughs) Uh, Ladies, you used to be real fancy too. When you went in public, you'd have big, beautiful dresses on. You have a parasol to protect your skin from the sun. And now when you go out, you're just wearing stretch pants. And you know what? I'm fine with it. <laughs> Depending on the venue, some places you go, it's great. Like Target, sign me up. I'm all about a little Target toe. <laughs> the guy likes a nice puffy puss, right? You know, fucking... Yeah. Are you here by yourself? Because, like, they put you by yourself. Like, I, I believe that you're by yourself. I th- you're like, no, I'm not by myself, but you are. Like, I, that's cool. We'll go to Target after this. We'll hang out. It'll be fun. Walmart, mm, not so much. Uh, nah, like, because there's always, like, it's not everybody in there, but there's always that one lady that's just, like, putting every, like, just going way too hard on the, her fupa is just, and I hate that word, I hate that word, but it's, we all know that word, so it's easier to just say that. Do you not know what a fupa is? Uh, hello. You know what a fupa is, right? Okay, okay, I, I, you, you talk to him like you didn't know, I want to make sure you know, because it's, it's always, like, there's always that one lady you can't take your eyes off her, and she's got the, like, sweatpants that became stretch pants, and... <laughs> There's always a dirty little kid that keeps 
pushing into it. Just that dirty little kid with a bad haircut just pushing into his mom's fupa like he like he's trying to spill a glass of wine on a mattress. And he's just like, give me some candy. I want ice cream. Buy me a toy. And the whole time you're watching, you're like, stop touching it. That's how you get autism. <laughs> Anybody in here work in an office? Anybody? Office job? Okay. Who, all right. Who, who back here? Someone over there. So. What, do you, what do you do in the office? Me? Yeah. Front desk. Front desk? I don't think you work in the office. <laughs> You you work you like start the office you're not like you're you're not part of it. <laughs> so, no, you're you're cool, Pam. Uh, <laughs> what kind what, what what kind of office is it? What 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 do they do there? It's medical. It's a medical office, and and you just like run the office. Did somebody woo a medical office? Are you, oh, you guys all work at one too? Not you. You're like not me. I. But yeah. yeah. But are you guys also like front desk workers? Oh. No. They're like, see how they don't respect you? <laughs> see how they're like, they're like, no. We do the real shit in the back. <laughs> that actually is funny because I have a friend and. Uh, <laughs> She always makes fun of my job because I, I work on the radio in Cleveland, and and she she's an abortion doctor, so she's. All, <laughs> women can be doctors. Don't laugh. <laughs> and she she always talks about how my job's not important. She's like, Bill, if you're late for work, they just play another Nickelback song. <laughs> But if I'm late for work, I become a pediatrician. <laughs> so what do you guys do in the, the medical field? Derm. Derm? Dermatology? Yeah. yeah that's, that's the cool way to say it. <laughs> we're, we're derms. <laughs> Sup, derm. <laughs> Those ear, nose, and throat, fuck them. Derm. <laughs> oh, optical, yeah. different coverage. Beat it. <laughs> anyway, the point is, <laughs> the joke that I was making. Oh, are you on call right now? Is there a big <laughs> dry skit your brother's calling? <laughs> What? You, why is your brother calling you at 10 o'clock at night? That's a weird brother. Like, it's 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. You up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. See, like. It's your birth. Oh, it's your birth control. Well, fucking take it. Because this guy looks like he blows ropes. <laughs> Mormon? Oh, and you, I fucking invited you. And you didn't turn your phone on silent? Sorry. God damn it, Maddie. Sorry. I met her at the last hotel last summer, then I, I'm like, come on out, I'm headlining this time. And her fucking phone rings the second I step on stage. I fucking dare you. I was all ready to tell her about how I used to be Mormon, how, but how wearing this suit, I look like I'm just a different kind of Mormon. <laughs> A scarier kind, <laughs> where we don't follow the rules because they're too, they're not strict enough, kind of thing. And then behind me, the video board just says, "Where are you spending eternity?" You guys too? <laughs> <laughs> you got it now? Did you take your birth control? <laughs> you don't need it. Okay. <laughs> you just let them do what they want, and then you like burn. Yeah, you hear that? That's cool. <laughs> if I did start a church, I'd be pro cream pie, but not the kind that make babies. Uh, I do have kids, 
Who's got kids in here? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. How many kids you guys got? Just one. Just one? How old? Three. Three. Baby's new. I got three kids all grown up. My ex-wife's kids from her first marriage, but I've raised them like they're mine. I take care of them. I provide for them. They don't see their biological father. So I've stepped into that role. Thanks. That was real slow. You guys were way behind on that. You're like, oh, should we clap? Because he didn't have to do that. He knows that, right? Yeah. I, uh, what's that? You've been to this before. I is this a good thing or a bad thing? It is a good thing. It's, I'm, I'm a hero. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a good stepdad, which is a low bar. People are like, oh, what makes you a good stepdad? I didn't molest them. Everybody's like, oh, great. We love that. You guys don't. Okay, other people, they love that. You guys are like, probably not even that hard. <laughs> That was, that was the most fucked up version of that joke I've ever told. Um, <laughs> what do you guys? I love those kids. Like I said, they're all grown up now, uh, and uh, they're good. Like my uh, <laughs> when they were teenagers, that was a little rough. I remember one time when they were teenagers, my oldest daughter said to me, uh, "I hate you, and I've always hated you." Now, in her defense, I did ask her to refill the Brita pitcher, so I probably had it coming. <laughs> That 17 seconds of her life, she'll never get back. <laughs> but when she said it, it didn't even hurt my feelings because I had been around long enough by then that when she said, I hate you and I've always hated you, what I heard was this. I'm 15 years old and I don't understand why my biological father's not a part of my life. It makes me sad, it makes me angry, I get emotional and I lash out at people, but I don't mean it and I'm sorry. But I do appreciate that you've taken time out of your life to care for me, love me, to <laughs> and be a role model for me. And I fucking hate you. <laughs> because as teenagers, if your kids don't hate you a little bit, you're fucking up. Uh, you don't want the relationship where it's like mom and daughter and we're like, we're best friends. That's not good. <laughs> that, you're right, that means you're like two years away from having a joint OnlyFans account. Like that's... <laughs> I, uh, I have a dog, too. I have a petite golden doodle. I bought my dog. People will get mad about that. You should have bought dogs. You should have dumped dogs. But they don't understand my situation. I live in a condo, so I need a small dog that's hypoallergenic, that's not going to shed. Blah, blah, blah. Those are my excuses. But what it comes down to is, I have rescue kids. I can buy a dog. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, like I said, my kids are all grown up now. Uh, my youngest is transgender, uh, born, assigned female at birth, transitioned to, to live uh, as a male, and uh, here's a story of how he came out to me, uh, because I think it's a good story to tell. Uh, he was about 12 years old, and he got his hair cut real short. And after his hair cut, he come to, I, I, I picked him up and I was like, hey, if you want to live a certain way, all you gotta do is tell me, it will make that happen. And at first he was all shy. He was like, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. That's not, I don't even know. And then like a week later he comes up and he's like, hey, remember what you said after I got my hair cut? I said, about you transitioning to live as a boy? And he's like, yeah, that. Um, can we do that? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, wait, you're not mad at me? And I was like, well, when I met you, you were four years old, and you walk around the house without a shirt on, with a mustache drawn on your upper lip saying, What's up, everybody? My name's James. I'm a dude. So no. <laughs> Not mad at you. We've been waiting on you, asshole. <laughs> and he is an asshole, by the way. I don't care what's going on with your front. You want to switch them? I don't care. Everyone has an asshole. Everyone can be an asshole, and he's an asshole. And that's why I like that he's older now, because now he gets injections, and he doesn't like getting shots, and I like stabbing him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I've told that joke a bunch of times, and it's got a lot of views on TikTok and YouTube, and, and uh, people are very ignorant about the transgender community, especially in the world of comedy. And they're like, no, oh, it's not a thing, it's just pretend, blah, blah, blah. But there's hundreds of studies and books and all this research on how it's not just about the genitals, but it's about, on like a cellular level, you feel that way because that's what your cells 
were programmed to do. I didn't read either, but <laughs> it's there. Anyone could. No, I didn't need to read it because when my kid was like, hey, I want to live this way, and I was like, okay. And then we had to go to doctor's appointments. He was always ready to go to a doctor's appointment and excited about it. And then he became less depressed, and he became happy, and then he became himself. And I was like, oh, this seems like enough proof for me that he's on the way to being a better person. And then people go, oh, but I want my kid to be sad and suicidal. And I'm like, I know, Dad. <laughs> Give it up for Bill Squire. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I know it's weird for a white guy dressed in a suit to come up after two black guys. I feel like I should be like, should be like uh, all right, let's start the bidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got it. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, dude, look how horrified you are. <laughs> you, you, that's the right reaction. He was trying to add on to the joke, and you fucking bad, bad guy. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Don't, no, let's stop that now. Let's, uh, that, <laughs> that was a horrible way to start my set. <laughs> oh, um, he was just talking about, who, who here is young? Like, who's, like, how old are you, actually? You're 26. Okay. Do you know what uh, JR was just talking about? Columbia House. Do you know what that is? No. So Columbia House, the Spotify used to come in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how we'd get CDs back in the day. It was like you'd 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 get this like piece of cardboard and you check off the CDs you want and you send them two pennies and then they send you those and then they had your credit card information too and then they just charge you every month until and you had to like keep pay, but like nobody ever did uh, like it was such a scam but now yeah you don't need to understand how good you have it with Spotify <laughs> also this is a weird place to do a comedy show like because it's I know it's called a, like a rock climbing gym but this might as well be like a gynecologist's office to me like I don't, there's nothing I can do here <laughs> what, what do you do for a living I'm, I'm locked in on you I love you I love how horrified you were by him and it's just like it's my favorite thing and you did that for me sir so I appreciate that <laughs> you work in product development any products in particular <laughs> what Abercrombie and Fitch? Oh, so, like, more holes in the jeans! <laughs> more white models! <laughs> There's a documentary about that. That's not. <laughs> they tried to fix that a little bit, though, right? They, they tried a little bit. They, fi they, they, fixed, they fixed it. Uh, <laughs> You're back. <laughs> Everything good? Yeah. I know I know the bathroom's just far away. You weren't taking a shit. I know that. <laughs> They're just far away. Who's your favorite musician? I'm gonna keep going to you. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, of course. <laughs> oh, it's great. Taylor Swift's great. I, I you know who mine is? Prince. And he's dead. That's why I like purple. Pr Prince. You guys know, like, Prince? Woo! Yeah, Prince rules. And uh, there's, like, a rumor that Prince has this vault of music, like 10,000 songs that he never released. And I want them to release those songs because if there's one artist that could release a song that's so good that when you hear it, you have an orgasm, it's Prince. Right? Imagine that. You hear this song, guys, and you're just walking around, and you're just like, ooh. <laughs> Or ladies, you're walking around and you hear this Prince song and you're just like... <coughs> <laughs> I don't know what it sounds like when a lady comes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, do, what, what do you do for a living? She, product, she develops products for Abercrombie and Fitch. I don't know if you... Yeah, she ever, oh, you work together? I'm a fashion designer. You're a fashion designer? Yeah. At, at Abercrombie and Fitch? Yeah. Did you guys know that you could sell more clothes if you made them in my size? Uh, you guys, I know you. You do women's. You do women's? Um, 
you don't know me that well. Uh, and then you're the, uh, you don't work there. Okay. What do you do? Lawyer. Lawyer? Fucking, I love the authority you said that with. <laughs> we got all these art students around me, but I went to real school and make real money. I don't just draw a picture and be like, this would look cute. <laughs> What kind of law do you practice? Litigation. Litigation? I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's like arguing and shit, probably, right? Yeah. Where'd you go to law school? Uh, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt? Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> yeah, hey, you're, you're fucking high class. That's. I mean, I know that's a, like Vanderbilt's in uh, Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah, that's it's like, but like for Tennessee. <laughs> What a wild range of people that is. Like Vanderbilt, well-educated, smart people. Other parts of Tennessee, wow. <laughs> like you, you can see some real dumbs. Uh, my girlfriend, she's here tonight. She's a lovely lady. Uh, she did forget to pick me up from the airport a couple weeks ago. Uh, so right now, I'm winning the relationship. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't even really have a joke about that. I'd just like to remind her. Because uh, later that night we were watching The Bachelor and she's like, could you do that? Could you date 25 women at once? I'm like, yeah, because at least one of them's going to remember to pick me up. <laughs> don't worry, I'm going to make her cough later. <laughs> All right, what's your name, man? My name? Yeah, you. Yeah. Andrew. Andrew, and uh, uh, what do you do for a living? So I, work, I work for a bank. You work for a bank? Uh, I was, I, I th also, so my, my role was also... Uh, never mind. I, never mind. Shut up. <laughs> Fucking, I hate... I, no, I, I messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You work at Abercrombie & Fitch now, yeah. <laughs> I work at a bank, but also, if I can get just five minutes of your time after the show. <laughs> Are you with these three guys? No. Uh, I'm by myself. I just met them. Okay, you just met them. Okay. So you came to a comedy show by yourself. Yeah, my friends think stand-up is awkward. Oh, yeah, they nailed it. Uh, <laughs> this is awkward as fuck right now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you come to comedy shows by yourself. That rules. And you sit in the front row. Yeah, I fucking love that. What's uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work at um, a health tech company researching eating disorders. You work at a health tech company researching eating disorders. Yeah. We should talk after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. I got. I got. No, I are you? More. Yeah, you're. Yeah, are, because I, I mean, I obviously have one. It's just a, we, we like fat people have an eating disorder too. It's just like everybody's like, no, it's okay. <laughs> you, you can do that. But uh, do you work with the the skinnier ones? <laughs> Usually, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I dated a bulimic girl once. Very soft lips. <laughs> Because of the vomit, the acid. The, all right, yeah, you guys get it. Don't tell that joke at work. You'll get in trouble. Don't tell. <laughs> all right, I got to wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> this set is not ex at all what I had planned. 